Hi everybody, welcome to Inside Golf. I'm Harry Donahue. Today, I'm at Concord Country Club in Concordville, Pennsylvania, and we're gonna be taking a look at a restoration project. This has to do with a specific Hell's Half Acre. You've probably heard the expression in relating to the seventh hole at Pine Valley and a few other holes that are known for having a series of bunkers, maybe, oh, 225 yards or more out from a green. Well, the original design here was done by William Flynn. It was inspired by the work he did at Pine Valley when George Crump passed away prior to Pine Valley being completed. We're gonna talk with the superintendent here at Concord, Greg D'Antonio, and see yes. what he's so done in a short period of time to restore you know, the original the Hell's well Half Acre here at Concord. Also coming up on today's show, you know our friends at Valley Forge Tourism are always inviting us to check out the great golf courses in the county. Well now, when you're off the course, they want you to check out the brand new Visitor's Center at the Valley Forge National Historical Park. It was dedicated recently, and Rachel Riley will take us there. So from Concord to Valley Forge and the Bombers, it's all coming up next on Inside Golf. The 25th season of Inside Golf is presented by Destination Montco Golf. Your next golf getaway is in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Visit MontcoGolf.com. By the First Tee Greater Philadelphia. The First Tee not only helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit FirstTeePhiladelphia.org. By the Philadelphia Association of Golf Course Superintendents a community of professionals enhancing the game of golf since 1925. Make sure you thank your golf course superintendent today. By GAP, celebrating 125 years of amateur golf. By Jersey Man and Philly Man Magazine, a digital publication and private business network. Read the current issue free at jerseymanmagazine.com. By the Haverford Trust Company. For life's must-haves, there's Haverford. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia PGA section, the experts in the game and business of golf. Golf is the great equalizer. For many, this journey is an escape from reality, a chance to be part of a team, a career opportunity. PGA Reach impacts lives through golf by lifting people up, giving them hope and sending them down an alternate path that they never saw coming. With PGA Reach Philadelphia, as in life and in golf, the most important shot you take is the next one. And welcome back to Inside Golf and the Concord Country Club. Greg D'Antonio is our host today. Greg, in addition to being the golf course superintendent, here at Concord is also the president of the Philadelphia Area Golf Course Superintendents Association and we like to say a proud partner with us here on Inside Golf. Thanks for joining the team here, Greg. Thanks for having, thanks for coming out. <laughs> it's our pleasure. We've been to Concord a lot. We've covered a lot of events here at Concord and now we are covering the installation. I guess you could say to uh, something that used to be here when William Flynn originally designed this golf course. And it opened up, what, back in the late 20s, I believe. Yeah, 1927. So. And for some reason, uh, in the 30s, A.W. Tillinghast came here and uh, helped advise people on how to save money and decided that the bunker project that was here, and I guess you could call it a hell's half acre, similar to what's at Pine Valley and a number of other golf courses, he kind of plowed under and did, did away with it. He did. So why, all of a sudden, are you deciding to bring it back? So this is really the culmination of 10 years of work. Uh, for anyone that played Concord 10, 15 years ago, knew our 14th hole was kind of a, in a, you know, a black eye on the, on the rest of the golf course. So it kind of started as how do we fix that and really grew into a bigger project where really our 13th through 18th holes have been rebuilt. And the 14th hole, which was a par five, is now a par four. So to gain that stroke back, we brought this hole, which was, is 16 from a four to a five and culminates this year with this work, bringing it to about, from, a, from the tips, about 595 yard part five. As you mentioned, the Hell's Half Acre, where the Great Hazard was taken out in the Depression era, era by Tillinghast, and we're reintroducing it. 
I think the membership and the consulting architect thought it was something that will be unique to the club and, you know, kind of the, the golf area in Philadelphia itself. So. Anybody that's played Pine Valley number seven and par five has the uh, Hell's Half Acre, as they call it over there. Flynn was instrumental in that, too, because Crump, George Crump, of course, laid out Pine Valley, but didn't live to see the end of it. And uh, they say William Flynn had something to do with finishing up that golf course. Mm -hmm. Did he have something to do with the uh, Hell's Half Acre, too? He is the original uh, designer of this golf course. This was the seventh hole when he um, built it. So I'm guessing they finished Pine Valley, I think, end of 1918, 1920-ish, and probably came here. Uh, this opened in 1927, as I mentioned, and probably took the idea and the inspiration from there and put it put it here and uh, Tillinghast who also is known for hazards like this took it out when he was brought in to help the club save money and here we are uh, almost 80 years later putting it back in. Putting so. it back in and you're the lucky guy that oversees the I whole am. project. I am, absolutely. Did you have, do you have uh, resources to look back at what Flynn designed? Yeah, so the Hagley Museum down in Delaware um, has a lot of aerials of golf courses all over the area. We use them as inspiration for this. It's modified a little bit. Uh, we wanted to allow the ladies and the higher handicappers to play around it. It's about a 50-yard carry, so there's 10 yards of fairway to its left that they so can play So it doesn't of play stretch around. all the way across it the fairway? It does not. There's place. a little bit of fairway to, to the left, but uh, for most players, it'll be, a, it'll be a carry, and the idea being you need to be accurate off the tee to be able to get over it and have a wedge or a 9-iron in for your third shot. Whereas if you miss the tee, we have another fairway bunker off the tee, we have fine fescue to the right, you'll have to lay up and you'll have about 200 in um, to get on the green and try and save par. And oh, by the way, the hole plays uh, into the wind most of the time. Most of the time. Now, will you have different uh, grasses, fescue in between the actual we bunker will, designs? Yes. So that'll be probably an eight inch manicured fine fescue for both you know, reduced maintenance costs as well as uh, visually, you know, make it more impactful. Here where we're standing, this will be mowed to, again, if you try and lay short, give people an, I, the ability to get um, a ball on the club, but as well as help balls trickle into the bunker as well, so. Now you didn't lay this out yourself. I mean, the actual design, you re re relied on an architect. We use that? Jim Nagel, who works with Force Design. He's done a lot of other Flynn work uh, in the area, nationally, manufacturers, Lancaster, Lehigh, um, done, a lot of studying of Flynn's work through books and uh, visiting other national courses and you know really we he and I and, and our committee spent probably five years kind of fine-tuning this design and wow. we tweaked it and uh, hopefully we got it right we'll see here in a month when so. did the actual construction begin so the construction of the green began in November of last year we began the work on the actual bunkers there's 11 bunkers on this hole in about about a month ago and we hope to be finished up here in about a week if the weather cooperates has it been I guess from your standpoint, a pretty mild off-season winter? It has. It's been a That's little bit helped. of extremes, yes. It went from cold to wet, uh, so we weren't really able to get into a rhythm, but the last couple of weeks here have been better. Uh, we've been dried out a little bit, obviously, as the days are longer, things dry quicker, but uh, it's went pretty smooth, and so we'll have about a month to sit before we open and let everything mature. So It's amazing when we talk about the modern game, how this is a back-to-the-future design. It was here originally in the 20s, and now it's being 100, almost 100 years later, Absolutely. you're bringing it back. Everything's cyclical, right? I mean, everything that Tillinghast recommended we take out <laughs> or shrink, we've put back. We've expanded the greens back. We've put the bunkers back. We've widened the fairways. Uh, so yeah, everything's cyclical, just like I see mullets are coming back so, with the younger generation. <laughs> yeah, so. Cam Smith, yep, he's absolutely. sitting on top of the world. Uh, final point before we leave you here today, Greg, you have another big section championship coming up. We so do. The local pros are going to get a sampling of what you've done out yeah. here. That's coming up in August, right? Yeah, last week of August, week before Labor Day. So uh, yeah, we're hosting the section championship with DuPont. Uh, so it'll be interesting. It'll be a good test. By then it'll have matured for a few months where I think you'll get some more roll after the sod matures and knits. And so, yeah, that'll certainly be the test for the A player. Especially, let's just hope it's windy that day too, right? <laughs> right into the wind. Absolutely. All right. Greg D'Antonio, he has his plate full here at Concord. And this is a big slice of what he's been doing in the off season. In addition to his work as president of the local Golf Superintendents Association. I don't know how you have enough hours in the day, huh? I sleep plenty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do. Thanks again. Thanks for coming out. I and appreciate good it. luck. Thank you. Uh, we'll have to come it. out maybe and sample it ourselves. You guys are always welcome. Or, or talk to some of the members after they've been through it and 
putting up that seven or eight. <laughs> Good luck. Stay with us. More to come here on Inside Golf. of BMW X vehicles available, no matter what adventure lies around the corner, there's an X for that. Hurry and release a 2022 BMW X3 xDrive 30i for 569 per month. You don't have to go away to get away. Go and explore. Find the small businesses that make where you live a community. When you dine, choose homemade. On a free weekend, discover the great outdoors. And if it's brewed here, enjoy it with friends. Support small for an experience you won't find anywhere else. Make it local, make it Main Street, make it Motco. Welcome back to Inside Golf. You know, over the years, the folks at Valley Forge Tourism have been encouraging us to sample the great number of golf courses, 50 or more, just in Montgomery County. Well, now they have something else they'd like you to experience. It's the brand new visitor's center at Valley Forge National Park. And here to give us a tour and to tell us what it's all about is Rachel Riley. The Valley Forge National Historical Park celebrated the grand reopening of its brand new visitor center, which has been a long time coming. It is my fervent hope that you will take advantage of the opportunity to learn one of the most remarkable stories of our War of American Independence. A story told inside this building and told on these hallowed grounds. Today we, saw, we basically rededicated our uh, visitor center. First opened in 1976 and this was the first major renovation in its history. We improved all sorts of things, better bathrooms, better lighting, better accessibility, and a completely redone exhibit telling the history of the encampment here at Valley Forge in the winter of 1777-1778. Visitors come in, what's the experience going to be like for them? The experience is they're gonna actually be able to kind of follow the path of the encampment, you know, from a bedraggled army, a Arriving here at Valley Forge, trying to hold itself together to, to getting trained, getting recognition from, from uh, the Continental Congress, and then marching out as a reformed force. And then also they get to see the story of Valley Forge itself, the actual landscape, how it went from this place where the army encamped during the Revolutionary War to a beloved uh, national park that uh, you know, was conserved by the citizens here in the local area and is now enjoyed by millions. We have three statements of significance as the National Park here. Uh, one is to tell the story of the encampment. Uh, two is to tell the story of uh, the natural history of, and, and the recreational opportunities that we have here. The story of the encampment is very much tied to the story of the cultural, agricultural, natural landscape of this park. And then the third story that I've really been thinking about is the story of citizen stewardship. The only reason this park is here is that a hundred years ago, a, a couple of citizens got together and said, you know, George Washington's headquarters is, is worth saving. I've literally been coming to Valley Forge Park for my entire life. Um, I remember coming here for field trips when I was in school. We used to sled here. I brought my then girlfriend, now wife here on picnics. We brought our boys here for Washington's birthday when we could still make them come. Um, so I think sometimes we take for granted the park here in our own backyard and to think that we have two million people to come here and this will really be the gateway for a lot of those folks. We're looking forward to showcasing this museum, this amazing museum, to our out-of-town visitors, our international guests, and promoting it to the local community as well. The new visitor center enhances the experience for everyone coming to the park. And with these latest upgrades, it gives everyone a new reason to come and visit. So if you've been here before, I hope you will come back so that you can see this new visitor center. We want you to stop by. We want you to get out and enjoy these amazing trails. This is the place to come and learn about our history.
to walk or hike or bike these trails. And there's all kinds of other opportunities just to be outdoors here and enjoy this very historic and, and for me, I find it a very inspirational place. So it is appropriate at a grand reveal in the 18th century at least that we cheer. And so I will lead the cheer and you will respond with a hearty and fervent huzzah as the ribbon is cut. Is everyone ready? Yes. To the grand reveal, to this remarkable and hallowed ground, to the telling of the story, and to the United States of America. Hip, hip, huzzah! huzzah! Hip, hip, huzzah! huzzah! Hip, hip, huzzah! Now, seeing it on camera really doesn't do it justice, folks. You're going to need to come on out and see it for yourself. So take a visit here to Valley Forge National Historical Park. For the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board, I'm Rachel Riley. Thanks, Rachel. And thanks also for reminding us that we have to go out there and see that brand new visitor center at Valley Forge National Park. Stay with us up next here on Inside Golf, our teed off panel getting ready to talk about the Bombers era for the game of golf. And I don't know that Kepka and the Jimbo will be. Welcome back. Inside Golf continues with our teed off panel here at Lulu Country Club in Orland. And if you haven't been here yet, you've got to put it on your bucket list. Go to Lulu. Come to Lulu, or as they call it, the Lou. We got Joe Logan at the Lou today. He's been here before, major contributor to Inside Golf and Teed Off from MyPhillyGolf.com. Thank you. Speaking of the Lou, this, this guy put the L in the U in Lou, <laughs> didn't you? Jim <laughs> Sullivan. Oh, I'll take it. Always uh, a, a great contributor to uh, our panel discussions here at Lulu. And he spends a lot of time As here, a Glenside you? guy, i got to correct you, Harry. We're in Glenside. Glenside. Is this considered Glenside, not Orland? Okay, you're probably right. Okay. But thanks for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I can, I can take it. I don't want to throw you off. This is Chris Lang. He's not from Lulu. He's from Overbrook. And uh, he is, of course, recently inducted into the GAP, Golf Association of Philadelphia Hall of Fame, three-time winner of the Philly Yam. Won 150,000 tournaments. <laughs> and we're just glad you could fit I'm happy us to into your busy schedule. Joe, let's talk about another new era when it comes to bombers, whether it's pro golf or, you know, college golf, amateur golf, whatever. The way people are just hitting that ball is off the charts, okay? Is, has, there, has there ever been in the past, and I'm going to go back because you and I can go back, um, what, what was considered a, a great drive from Jack Nicklaus, say, back in the 60s when he was breaking on 275 tour. or something, I think. 275 I mean, was like, wow. Uh, that, that, 275 today, you know, guys, I know, you're you get a hit a rescue out there. Yeah. <laughs> At least on the PGA Tour and, uh, and, and young guys. But it, this is a different time. I mean, we, it used to be a few people hit it a long way. Now, you got to hit it a long way to just be in the conversation. I, to me, a fun exercise is go to your golf course at home, wherever you play, and, and go around. As you go around, sort of bear in mind, this is where Dustin Johnson would hit his tee shot. <laughs> What's he got left, you know? A little pitch and putt kind of thing. They would do that to all these golf courses. And now they're, they're just all doing it between the improved equipment, the improved just people work out now, and the philosophy. The philosophy is you've got to kill it or you're just not going to be a winner. It's taken over the game. It's changing the game. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy, you've been playing since how old were you when we first picked up? Do you yeah, remember? Four or five. Six, four very or young. Five. My dad played a ton, so. Right. Your grandfather was, was a great player. Your yeah. father was a great player. Yeah, I started You were a great player. Still are. I shouldn't say were. Yeah, were. <laughs> were is probably more but appropriate. Here, uh, I'm, what I'm trying to pick up on, Joe, with the equipment and everything, there's more things than just the equipment. It's finding out immediately via apps or whatever, track man, going to a simulator like we have some guys here today at, at Lulu. And they know within seconds everything they need to know about how they're hitting the ball. How has that improved personally for a guy like you or anybody? what you can do with that golf ball. Yeah, the technology is, is a lot in two ways. Knowing the quality of the strike and how far it goes, and, and then you know, kind of immediate feedback, say, all right, let's work on this a little differently without wasting 
a hundred balls trying to figure it out. On one or two balls, you see, all right, it's spinning a little too much. Let's work on something different to get more yardage. But also the data that Joe referenced of the course plays easier when you smash a driver up as far as you can as opposed to trying to fit it into a fairway and come in with an eight iron. If you're at 75 yards, the stats just say you're going to make a better score, even if you're in the rough, than if you were in the, than if you were in the fairway. So, you know, you're incentivized to hit it as far as you can based on the data these days. You are an elite amateur golfer. Uh, you played hundreds, thousands of rounds of golf. Today, are you able to transition to this new era of, you know, metrics and you know, gadgets that can help you improve, or are you still back into the feel uh, sense of playing the game? Well, um, you know, to adapt, you need to, as Alan Iverson would say, practice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't practice that much anymore, but it is a new game. The game has changed a lot. You know, I was at a, uh, an exhibition uh, where Bryson DeChambeau was putting on an exhibition. I was sitting here, he's hitting balls, and he's just changing uh, the, the whole way the game is played. He swings absolutely as hard as he can on every swing. And, you know, traditional golf, when I was growing up, it was about tempo. It was about a, a lot of different things. So the game is changing. Um, I think that at some point, you know, we're going to have to answer the question, you know, are we going to let these great golf courses, you know, be antiquated by the better athlete, by the better technology, by the better equipment? And I think Jack Nicklaus identified that in the early 90s that uh, you know, he, he, he's a proponent of changing the ball, dialing the ball back. I happened to ask Bryson about that. Uh, and uh, you know, his answer was, well, the fan wants me, they wanna see me hit at 400 yards. They wanna see me, and you know, to a degree he's right. But I, I really believe that these great golf courses that we have, as Jimmy just said, where, you're, where the greatest of players are hitting a 75 yard shot where they used to hit a 175 yard shot it's a different game, and I think that uh, personally, my opinion is we need to we need to save these great venues. Right. You know, you made an interesting point about what what DeChambeau said about people want to see him hit the ball as far as he can. The difference, Joe, like you know, in baseball, they have the home run derby around the All Star game, where all you do is try to hit as far as you can the home runs. But the people they like watching it, maybe, but they can't do that. I think with golf, the difference is a lot of these people think eventually they'll be able. To hit the ball as far as DeChamp, but they're kind of kidding themselves, though, aren't they? I, I don't know. Is that uh, realistic? Well, uh, I don't know if they're kidding themselves. I mean, everybody now, what, young kids growing up learning the game. When I was learning the game, it was all they were teaching like grips, tempo, and shot value, and things like. Now they learn to just kill it, kill it, go find it, and kill it again, and. That's just what you learn when you take up the game now. And it's, how can it not affect? the game for better or worse going forward. So the only what would be the only defense that a golf course has aside from, you know, backing the ball up or changing, you know, clubs and things. What have like twelve inch rough, you know, six feet off the fairway. So then you gotta think, well maybe I better hit that fairway. Maybe I shouldn't just swing as hard as I can. I don't know. Quicksand. Put quicksand, quicksand all around, water. <laughs> huh? Let me make another point if you've got time. Colin Morikawa, well, you know we always have. Colin Morikawa is not known as a bomber. Now, compared to us, he hits it certainly further than us. But he's, Among one, his of the, peers. He, he's one of the top two or three players in the world right now, and certainly in the last two years, maybe the best. I mean, be in that conversation. And he plays a control game. And I'm a believer that the control game will win in the, in the, in the long run. And I think he'll be playing when he's 50. And I don't know that Kepka and, and DeChambeau will be. So you heard it here first. All right, a prediction. And I'll add one thing, Sully. if I may. Sure. DeChambeau talked about his win at Wingfoot, and that was because of the way he chipped and putted the ball, not so much because he hit it 350 yards. Yeah, it all so comes down. You still have to get it in. It all hole. comes down to that blade, doesn't it? Gentlemen, thank you. Stay with us. More to come here on Inside Golf. Designed by Donald Ross, Lulu Country Club is one of the premier private golf courses in Montgomery County. This classic 18-hole course boasts a new state-of-the-art clubhouse with many amenities for members to enjoy. Members are invited to play in events, tournaments, and enjoy guest privileges. For more information, contact membership at lulucc.com. For over two decades, First Tee has created experiences that build character. We believe every kid deserves to feel supported, safe to try something new, and to be prepared for what comes next. We develop their swing, 
but more importantly, their inner strength. Because we know what's inside doesn't just count, it changes the game. Come join us at First Tee. The oldest state or regional golf association in the country hits a milestone this year. GAP celebrates its 125th birthday. Celebrating amateur golf since 1897, GAP has evolved to include 300 plus member clubs, more than 90,000 individual members. It offers events for males and females of all ages and ability levels. GAP continues to uphold its mission to preserve, protect, and promote the game of golf. Happy birthday, GAP. That's going to do it for this week's edition of Inside Golf. Our thanks to Greg D'Antonio, our host today at Concord, as we looked at the uh, renovated Hell's Half Acre here on the 16th hole. I know you can't wait for that project to get completed. Absolutely. And as we said earlier, get the react from your members. I'm sure it's all going to be on the plus side. Let's hope anyway, right? Oh, absolutely. And thanks also to Rachel Riley for giving us a look at the completely renovated Tourism Center at Valley Forge National Park. I'm Harry Donahue. Remember, no matter how bad it's going for you out there, even if you come here to Concord and play Hell's Half Acre, don't pick up. And we'll see you next time on Inside Golf. The 25th season of Inside Golf is presented by Destination Montco Golf. Your next golf getaway is in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Visit montcogolf.com. By the First Tee Greater Philadelphia. The First Tee not only helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit firstteephiladelphia.org. By the Philadelphia Association of Golf Course Superintendents, a community of professionals enhancing the game of golf since 1925. Make sure you thank your golf course superintendent today. By GAP, celebrating 125 years of amateur golf. By Jersey Man and Philly Man Magazine, a digital publication and private business network. Read the current issue free at jerseymanmagazine.com. By the Haverford Trust Company. For life's must-haves, there's Haverford. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia PGA section, the experts in the game and business of golf.